Hi there. One of the uh, key supply side measures of any economy when we're thinking about macro performance is the idea of trend growth of GDP. I just wanted to spend a minute or two with you on the idea of trend growth. So this chart shows the level of actual GDP that's shown in blue. Familiar economic cycle, I hope. I've taken out oil and gas. It's in a highly volatile sector. So it shows the level of output in the economy of GDP. The orange line shows a slightly flatter trajectory, and that's the growth of potential output or the growth of the trend growth of GDP. Now, one of the aims of supply side policies in the economy is to increase a country's potential national output. In other words, raise the trend level of GDP. The key thing is how does a country do that? What, what are the mechanics of, of getting that orange line moving upwards effectively if you want to link it to some concepts? It's the long and aggregate supply curve shifting out or it's an outward shift of the production possibility frontier. So how do we do it? Well, here's some data for the UK economy, which gives us some important clues. So the trend growth of the UK can be broken down into its basically its four main component parts. You can see, for example, that one of the key causes of growth of potential GDP is the growth of potential productivity output per hour. If you can lift the increase in productivity, if you can make the economy more efficient, that is the main driver of potential GDP. Increasing output per hour, output per person employed is massively important. And you can see from the UK's perspective that there's a, there's a hope that the rate of productivity growth will rise from about 1.4% per year last year to 1.8% this year. And perhaps, who knows, even as high as 2% or more in the next couple of years. Another way that you can increase aggregate supply is by getting people to work more hours. Actually, the forecast, the forecast is that average hours worked may actually diminish in the next two or three years. The other way that you can get uh, uh, the aggregate supply to shift out is by getting more people in work, percentage of the population aged above 16 who are in work. And that's not really changing very much. The employment rate is fairly high already and getting more people into work is, is pretty tricky. Childcare policies and minimum wages and living wages and things can have an effect at the margins. But it's not the most important thing. In fact, what's more important, as you can see, is the growth of potential population growth. And so a key factor causing an increase in trend growth is the growth of the country's population, which feeds into an increase in the size of population of working age. Now, in the short term, of course, the birth rate doesn't have much effect at all. The main driver of this is inward migration, which in the UK has been averaging somewhere between 200 and 300,000 people per year. Add these four columns together, a little bit of rounding error involved, you end up with the fifth column, potential output growth for the UK. And the forecast, at the time of the last budget, this is from the Treasury, is that Britain's potential growth rate is going to nudge a little higher from just over 2% towards 2.3%. Now, that may not be very much in, uh, in percentage terms, but it's a sign, perhaps, that the British economy might be increasing its trend growth just a little bit. Why? because the biggest single driver of trend growth is productivity. So if you get a question on productivity, it is a massively important topic for the trend growth of GDP. Thank you.